Hello again, my Channel 9 friends. Uh, Rory here, and this is part two of my Windows Mobile Development uh, Syncing Data with, Syn with uh, SQL Server Screencast. In part one, we looked at how to set up the server side of things so that uh, we could actually write the code to um, perform syncing between a mobile device and SQL Server. Now, if you haven't watched part one, then part two, which is this part, the second part, is going to make absolutely no sense whatsoever. So stop what, you're good, stop what you're doing, go back, and make sure that you watch part one if you haven't watched it already. Okay, very, very important that you watch part one. Um, with that out of the way, uh, this is going to be, um, a, in a lot of ways, a fairly straightforward demo. Um, there's going to be some ADO.NET code that's going to be nothing out of the ordinary. The only thing that's going to be a bit different is, uh, is what you're going to be seeing in the, uh, in the RDA API. And RDA stands for re Remote Data Access. And, it, and it's one of several methods of syncing data between a mobile device and um, a, a server. You could, if you wanted to, uh, for example, use web services. Um, you could use merge replication. Uh, if you're really, really savvy and you don't mind getting your hands dirty, you could use um, Active Sync. But the easiest way really to get data back and forth between a mobile device and a server, especially where SQL Server is concerned, is by using RDA, Remote Data Access. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. And we're just going to get started here right now. So I'm going to head over to Visual Studio 2005, and I'm going to create a new project. And as always, uh, it's going to be a Windows Mobile 5.0 Pocket PC application, regular old device application, and I will call this Channel 9 RDA Demo. Now, since this is going to be running on my iMate Jazz Jar, the one that, I'm, that, that I always use for the demos here, which is uh, this right here, and again, we're seeing this through Sodi Pocket Controller Professional, um, I want to right-click. Uh, get rid of the skin, and then rotate the form so that it's landscape mode. Um, by now, you should have seen me do this enough times that it's just kind of becoming normal for you. Um, of course, if you're using a device which is in portrait mode, then you probably don't want to follow what I'm doing here. But um, I'm not, so there we go. <clears throat> I'm going to add uh, a, couple, a couple things to the form here right after I change its title, since I like to be very thorough like that. So I'll call this channel... 9 RDA demo. Oh, I feel weird about not capitalizing that. Okay, RDA demo. So that's good. So I'm going to add um, a data grid to the form, which we're not going to use for a while. Uh, for the next few minutes, it's just going to kind of be sitting there looking pretty um, or doing whatever data grids do when we're not using them. But I'll still give it a name and, uh, and I'll dock it. So I'm just going to call it grid and I'm going to set its dock to fill. What I am going to do um, is add a couple items here. Uh, the first menu item is going to be RDA pull. Okay, and I'll explain this concept in just a moment. And then over here, I'm going to add a menu, which will be a placeholder for things that we're going to be adding later on. Now, since we're using a technology here called RDA, um, the, what you're going to need to become most familiar with uh, in RDA, which is actually a very, very simple API, are the concepts of an RDA pull and an RDA push. Okay, in in the uh, in the screencast that I did a while back, um, well, actually not too long ago, I guess it was really today, but uh, but two screencasts ago, um, I showed you how to write an application running against uh, SQL Server Mobile, and everything happened exclusively within the realm of SQL Server Mobile. Um, when you're dealing with RDA, you're actually kind of crossing into another boundary where you are doing a little bit of work with SQL Server and you're pulling data down to SQL Server Mobile. Okay, And when you pull that data down from SQL Server to SQL Server Mobile, that's what we're calling an RDA pull. Okay? So I'm going to go into the code behind here for the application, or actually for the RDA pull menu item. And I'm going to make sure that I have uh, some rather important using statements set up here. So system.data. I actually need to add a reference. I'm going to go over here to my Solution Explorer, right click on References. And I'm going to add a reference, and it is going to be to the, let's see, system.data.sqlserver CEDLL. There we go. And then using system.data.sqlserver CE. So we are going to be doing some SQL Server mobile work here, and we need to have that DLL uh, referenced. Now out here in, uh, in the form code, 
the first thing I'm going to have to do to make this RDA poll possible is uh, add some code here from, an R, from, a, from a snippet uh, I have. And it's for three connection streams, which probably seems a little bit excessive to you. You know, you're probably used to the kind of kind of situation where you only really need one connection string and that's it and it takes care of everything for you. In the RDA world, we, we need several. The first one that we are going to look at here is the RDA OLEDB connect string, okay? So because we're pulling data from a SQL Server instance, we need to somehow specify what SQL Server instance we're pulling from, okay? And in this case, we specify that the data source is localhost, which is interesting because it, uh, this application is going to be running on a smart device, but the query that's going to be making use of this connection string is going to be running on the server side. So the data source is localhost. Um, the user is set to mobile user. That's the user that we created in the last session. And the password is set to password with the initial catalog set to mobile demo, which is the uh, demo database that I created for this demo. Next, um, we have the RDA URL. So if you recall in the last, uh, in, in, in part one of, of this two part screencast, um, I had to set up IIS using a wizard um, for an RDA connection, okay? And if you recall, this is the URL that would take us to that, uh, to that DLL. So I have to specify how to uh, get to that DLL, which uh, again, essentially acts as a broker between uh, the Windows mobile device and SQL Server. Finally, um, once we actually pull the data down from the server, we need a place to store it. So we also specify a local connection string. And in this case, we're saying that we would like the data source to be um, a SQL Server mobile database that's going to be stored under the My Documents folder, and it's going to be called the rdadb.sdf. So once we have all that in place, um, we are pretty much ready to get code in here. So I'm going to give myself some space, pull up a code snippet, and uh, put in my RDA poll method. And it's a little long, which is why I'm using the snippets. I don't want to sit here and make a bunch of mistakes in front of you um, and then have to debug. So the way the RDA poll works is uh, we, we, we don't already necessarily have a database on the mobile device, right? We don't really have any data to access yet. We have to pull it down from the server first. And as you recall, we, we created a local connection string so that we specified where that uh, data would go. Um, the first thing we want to do when we're pulling our data from the server is ensure that we have the freshest data. And, uh, and, and to do that, we are going to delete um, any instances of, of uh, the database that we're using locally that may be left over from a previous session, a previous running of the application. So we just check to see if the database is already there. And if it is, then we delete it which reminds me, I need to add a reference to system.io. So using system.io, there we go. So we head back down to the code. So we check to see if the database is there and if it is, we delete it. The next thing we do is we create an instance of the SQL CE engine, okay? And we're using this um, to create the database where we're going to store the information after we perform um, our RDA pull. Okay, so we set the connection string of this engine to the local connection, which is, uh, which is just exactly this string right here. Um, and then we create the database. So this will create the file for us. And then we dispose of the engine, we're done. The next thing we do um, is we create a new instance of SQL CE remote data access. Okay, and this is our RDA object and that's where we're gonna be, it's how we're gonna be doing all of our work. And then we instantiate it and, uh, and while, we're, while we're instantiating it um, into the constructor, we pass the URL to the DLL that acts as our broker. Um, remember the thing that's sitting and living out in IIS. And then we pass the local connection, which specifies uh, the, the, uh, the local um, um, SQL mobile uh, database in which we would like to store our data. And it looks like I actually uh, specified that here as well in property form. So that's actually a little bit redundant. Um, the URL is already specified here as is the local connection, so I don't need either one of these lines. Just a little bit over there, but no big deal, easily uh, rectified. Next, and, and, and RDA is a beautifully simple API. I simply call the pull method uh, on our RDA object. I specify the table from which we would like to pull data. I specify uh, the query string that we're going to be using, which is just to, to return everything from the customer's table. I specify the um, RDA OLEDB connection string. Remember, we, we looked at that earlier, and I said that at some point, um, a query is going to have to run on the server side, and uh, this is how that's going to happen. Um, the RDA uh, 
call here is going to access um, SQL, SQL Server through IIS. And once it gets there, it needs to use this connection string to hook up to SQL Server. Finally, we have uh, some choices about uh, uh, whether or not we would like RDA to track changes that we make to the data once we pulled it. And in this case, where we're going to be syncing data, that is, we're going to be eventually pushing it back, um, we definitely want to have tracking set to on. Okay. Um, this is the, the uh, default option, but I like to be explicit about it. And we definitely want tracking on. And then once we're done, we simply put in, uh, we, we dispose of the RDA object. And then here I pop up a message box so that we know once everything is completed. And if something goes horribly wrong, we catch the exception and we display the message that goes along with it. But hopefully everything is going to work. So let's build here and, and, and just hope for the best. So the build succeeded, which makes me a very happy person. And uh, we're not going to be running against the emulator. We're going to be running against my actual device. So I'll select that. So the last thing that I have to do here is make sure that the menu item uh, click event uh, wires up properly to the RDA pull method. So I'm going to just put in RDA pull. So when a user clicks on RDA pull right here, uh, it'll actually do something. So I'm going to hit F5 and uh, head on over to Pocket Controller and wait for the application to load. All right, so here we are inside the uh, application here, and I'm just going to hit this RDA pull button. Now, when I do this, uh, there's going to be a little bit of a delay because uh, RDA pull um, has to go out through IIS and then down to SQL Server, grab the data, pull the data back, push it back through IIS, and uh, back out to the device after we've locally created a database. So it, it can take a moment. Um, clearly, it didn't take all night and day. Uh, as the little done indication tells us here, but um, you know it does take a minute. So keep in mind that uh, RDA is the sort of thing you're going to be using, not you know like you know RDA pull and then push and then pull and then push and then pull and then push and then pull and push and then pull and push every single time you make a change, but more like the kind of thing where you would pull in the morning and then you know eventually some crucial point later on in the day or or at the end of the day or whenever uh, push your records back to the database and then perhaps perform another pull if that's entirely necessary. So we hit OK. And uh, hopefully, um, what that did was copy um, a table down to our locally created database, um, the customer's table. And one easy way to find out if that worked or not is to go out into Query Analyzer here on the device. And so there is, uh, there's our database, actually, the one that we just created. So I can connect to it here, or at least I can try to. We can expand tables. And good, so there's our customer's table. So we know that at least uh, the customer's table came down. And just to make sure that all the data that we want is in there, I'm going to select star from customers here and run the query, and our data came back. So uh, there's our data. It means that RDA pull is definitely working right now. So we've got everything uh, configured correctly, and we've, we've got the code in place uh, to, to perform all this action. So the next thing, the next thing we want to do is uh, make, us, make it possible for us to modify the code, or I shouldn't say modify the code, but modify some data, and then push it back so that uh, you know, we wind up syncing up with the customer's table that is on the desktop, or on the server, I should say. The next step is to go to the, uh, the design view of our form, and we're going to start adding menu items here. So the first item is going to be uh, add row, and then the next item will be RDA push. And you can kind of guess what these are going to do. Um, add row is going to add a new row to the uh, table locally on the device. RDA push is going to push our data back out to um, the server. So first we'll fill in some code here for add row. And I'll grab a code snippet here. And I do this mainly just to save time. Um, I'll do some manual coding in a minute here, but uh, it's really just standard ASP.NET. Um, we create a SQL C connection, so it's not much different from a standard SQL connection, uh, just really in the uh, uh, a few API options and and uh, the name of the class itself. And we we instantiate that connection using the local connection string um, that we specified all the way up here at the top, just in case you forgot, and that refers to the uh, database that gets created while we are performing our RDA pool. We open the connection. Um, you might recall from the previous uh, uh, database screencast that I did that um, new ID doesn't work with SQL Server Mobile. So we have to generate our own GUIDs for, insert for insertion into the database. So uh, 
I'm creating a uh, an insert an insert uh, command here, and so I'm just going to insert into the customers table uh, the first name, last name, country, and ID columns. Uh, the following values. So I'm just going to put in test user from somewhere, and then I concatenate the GUID. Um, and then finally, uh, I create a SQL command object. I execute an on query, and then just like on the desktop, I just dispose of my objects, and then uh, we call messagebox.show done. So we know that the operation is completed. Now, some of you might be looking at this and and saying, "Oh, great! You know, this guy's performing ad hoc SQL queries. This is a total security risk because that's what we've all been taught." But keep in mind that um, we're not actually working in an environment here where we're going to have to worry too much about a SQL injection attack. <laughs> we are talking about um, a single user environment, in a, a, sing, a, a disconnected single user environment, um, I should stress. So uh, it's actually still perfectly all right to perform ad hoc SQL queries and inserts, et cetera, um, in, a, in a mobile application like this. You're not going to really run into any problems. And finally, after we've modified the row, or after we've added the row, we want to perform an RDA push. And here I'll just do um, a little bit of coding by hand just for kicks. So as usual, wrap everything up in a try block just because, you know, you never know when everything's going to go horribly wrong. Um, we'll grab the SQL C exception. And if anything happens, we'll message box show it. Oh, not equals. See, this is why you use, use snippets because uh, if you're like me, you can't actually type ex.message. And then um, see, RDA push is a pretty simple, or actually, I should say RDA pull is a very simple option. But RDA push is even easier, if you can believe it. So we're going to say uh, SQL CE remote data access um, RDA equals null. So again, just like with the pull, we're creating an instance of the, the SQL C remote data access class, calling it RDA. Then we instantiate it, just like before. And we pass in, just like before, um, you'll probably get sick of me saying that, um, the URL to IIS, as well as the local connection, which specifies um, where the data is that we want to push back out to the server. Then we'll say rda.push. See, it's not a terribly complicated API. Um, we want to push back the customers table. And we're going to be using the RDA OLADB connection string for that. And even though we're only going to be adding one record, um, I just want you to see that we have the option to turn batching on so that we can uh, we can push back multiple rows at once if we need to do that. Then rda.dispose. And then we'll just do a message box dot show and tell everybody that we're done. Couldn't be simpler. OK, it could. I mean, like a robot could come along and do all this in one line or something like that, and that'd be simpler. But that's not the world we live in. So we just deal with what we have here, which is pretty simple. So I'm going to save this and build it. Hopefully it'll build. Oh, please build. OK, good. It built. So now I'm going to run it. And I'll head back over to Sodi Pocket Controller. And it looks like uh, task switching sort of ignored me there. So I'll try this one more time. There we go. Query analyzer still open, but we're disconnected. So it's no big deal. So remember I said. Um, you always start by, by pulling the freshest copy of the data. So it'll overwrite that local data store um, with the freshest copy of the data. You definitely want to do that each time. And this would probably be a good place to do um, the beach ball so that people know that they're waiting for something in the beach ball. If you haven't, if you haven't been watching my other screencast, is, the, is what I call the Windows Mobile Hourglass. So I hit OK. I've got my data. Next, I'm going to add a row to that data. And hopefully this will work. OK, good. <laughs> and you never know um, when a demo is going to just completely fail in front of you. And then we're going to do an RDA push. And please, please, please work. OK, well, that makes me feel good. So um, we got OK messages all the way across. Um, hello. Could have sworn I clicked that button. OK. The first thing we're going to do, um, just for kicks, is go back to Query Analyzer and just see if locally the row was added um, like it was supposed to have been. So we'll head back over to SQL. Uh, we'll run our query. And there we go. Yeah, so our, our record was definitely added locally um, in our code there. So test user from somewhere, and there's the, the GUID we generated. And so the next thing we want to do is head over to uh, SQL Server Management Studio 
and open up the customers table and see if the data got pushed back. Hello. Hello. Okay. Good. It did. That makes me really happy. So there is test user from somewhere. That's uh that's a day that we just created, the row we just added, and then pushed back to the server. So as you can see, the the general principles behind RDA um, uh, are very very simple. Um, you just make sure you have uh, uh, you know all the all the proper security settings um, locally, IIS set up properly, and all of that. Uh, SQL server set up um, in terms of security. And then uh, on the device, you just perform that RDA pull so that you can store the information locally on the device. Um, you, you manipulate the data however you see fit or however is necessary. And then just push it right back on down to the server. Um, that's about as simple as it's going to get. There are other ways of doing it, but this is definitely uh, the simplest, um, at least, well, for me. So now I'm going to do one final little, little thing here with the application. Um, well, first I'll stop it. And we'll take a look at the main form here. So remember, um, I've got a grid here that's just been sitting here the whole time, not doing anything. Um, so I'd at least like to show you how you can uh, access a little bit of uh, access your data locally and then populate the grid after you've uh, grabbed it using an RDA pull. So I'm just going to type in populate grid as one of my menu options. Double click on that. And then we'll throw in a code snippet here. And again, we're dealing with uh, some really standard ADO.NET style code here. Um, we create a connection, we open the connection, we create a new data set, a new data adapter, which contains our select query as well as the connection that we're going to be using. And then we fill our data set using the data adapter, and we specify that we want to fill it with the customer's table, dispose of the connection, and set the data source of the grid to the customer's table um, from our data source. Couldn't be simpler. Well, okay, I said that before, and we discussed and, and, and realized that it could be simpler, but um, this, is, this is very, very, very simple. So we run it one more time, and I'll head back over to Pocket Controller. Or try to. It's actually 12.30 a.m. where I am, and I'm starting to hit that point where, uh, yep, I'm pretty tired. Now I need to make sure that Query Analyzer is disconnected uh, from the database so that we don't have any problems when we try to delete it when we pull down the freshest copy of the data. So I'm going to hit RDA pull. And then uh, after that's completed, doo -doo -doo, we just wait a moment. There we go. I'm going to hit uh, populate grid. And we're going to go out locally to the, to the data we just pulled from SQL Server. And we're going to populate our grid with it. There we go. So uh, again, not complicated stuff. We've got our grid right here. Um, obviously, you could take this much further, and that's something for you to do, um, something for you to do, uh, perhaps uh, when you try this on your own. Um, but those are the basics then. Uh, how to go in and use RDA to pull data from a data source, uh, modify the data, maybe examine the data locally uh, in a data grid, and then push it back down to a server. So that's pretty much it. Um, you know, it just kind of shows you how to, uh, to pull data from the server, manipulate it locally, uh, maybe display it, and then push it on back. Um, really a pretty simple deal. As I, as I mentioned in, part, uh, in the first part of this two-part screencast, the most complicated uh, issue you're going to deal with throughout RDA, in my opinion, is really just making sure that you've got SQL Server and IIS set up properly. Once you've got that out of the way, um, RDA pulling and pushing is, is extremely simple. So with that, if you have any questions, feel free to email me, RoryB at Microsoft.com. Um, and as I say at the end of every single one of these screencasts, I, I am a really busy person. Um, but I'll still do my best to uh, answer your questions if you ask them. You could also use um, the comment section of Channel 9, and that would really be even more helpful because then you might be asking a question that other people have, and they'll get the benefit of seeing the answer uh, if you happen to ask it there. So, so Channel 9 is a, is, a, is a good place to ask your questions, but you know, if you really want to, if you don't want to ask the question in public, feel free to email me. And keep an eye out because I have more screencasts to come um, tomorrow. 
we're going to be focusing on some of the new features of Windows Mobile 5.0, and it's actually going to be a lot of fun. Um, Windows Mobile 5.0 has some, has some great, great, great stuff going on for us, so we'll, we'll take a look at all that. So until then, I hope that uh, these things have been helping you out, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks.